Harvey Weinstein is accused of raping Italian star Asia Argento and forcing himself on Angelina Jolie, Gwyneth Porto, Rosanna Arquette and Myra Sorvino in private meetings. Angelina Jolie and Gwyneth Porto are the latest women to accuse movie mogul Harvey Weinstein of trying to force himself on them as three other women today said the Hollywood executive raped them. Italian star Asia Argento told The New Yorker that Weinstein raped her in 1997 at a party hosted by Miramax at the Hotel du Cap Eden Rock. She claims the mogul led her to an empty room and asked her to give him a massage. She reluctantly agreed, and halfway through he began to perform oral sex on her after forcibly lifting up her skirt despite her repeated requests for him to stop. Aspiring actress Lucia Evans and another unnamed woman accused him of rape as well according to the article. Jolie was promoting her film, Playing by Heart, in 1998 when Weinstein made unwanted advances on the then 23-year-old in a hotel room. I had a bad experience with Harvey Weinstein in my youth and as a result chose never to work with him again and warn others when they did, Jolie told the New York Times. This behavior towards women in any field, any country, is unacceptable. Porter, meanwhile, said that the man who launched her career sexually harassed her at his Beverly Hills Hotel when she was just 22, and that it almost lost her a big role. Rosanna Arquette and Myra Sorvino also state that the powerful Hollywood executive forced himself upon them, but that they were able to fight off his sexual advances. Soon after, the two women say their careers began to suffer. Gwyneth Porter I was a kid, I was signed up, I was petrified, said Porter, who revealed that when she was told to meet Weinstein in his hotel room she did not think anything suspicious of it because it came on a fax from Creative Artists Agency. Once she arrived at the hotel, he began to massage her and then asked her to join him in the bedroom. She rejected his advance and drove away devastated, thinking, I thought you were my Uncle Harvey. She told then-boyfriend Brad Pitt about the incident she said, who then confronted Weinstein. Weinstein came back to the actress and told her to never tell anyone what happened between them again. At the time, Porter was preparing to shoot the lead role in Miramax's new adaptation of Jane Austen Semmer alongside Tony Collett and Ewan McGregor. He screamed at me for a long time, said Porter. It was brutal. A few years later she was a superstar and Oscar winner, but she did not have the power to share her story. I was expected to keep the secret, said Porter, who called Weinstein alternately generous and supportive and championing and punitive and bullying. She has now decided however to no longer staying quiet. We're at a point in time when women need to send a clear message that this is over, said Porter. This way of treating women ends now. Asia Argento Argento says that she became suspicious when the party she arrived at was just an empty hotel room, but was assured that people would soon be arriving by Weinstein. Then, he emerged from the bathroom in a robe and holding a bottle of lotion, says the actress, who was just 21 at the time. He asks me to give a massage. I was like, look man, I am no f asterisk asterisk king fool, said Argento. But, looking back, I am a f asterisk asterisk king fool. And I am still trying to come to grips with what happened. The actress, who is the daughter of famed Italian director Dario Argento, said that once Weinstein began performing oral sex on her there was no way for her to stop him because he was so much bigger than her. It wouldn't stop. It was a nightmare, said Argento, who eventually decided to pretend she was enjoying the act in hopes that it would end. When it was over, Argento said she said on the bed and told her attacked, I am not a whore. He laughed at her and said he would put that on a shirt according to Argento, who said that Weinstein contacted her for months after the attack and even began offering her expensive gifts. Argento eventually relented and over time became close to her attacker and even engaged in consensual relations with him she admits. 
She explained the sudden shift by saying that it was a few months before the release of her 1999 film, B. Monkey and she was afraid that if she did not agree to Weinstein's advances he might destroy her career. The following year, Argento released her film, Scarlet Diva, which had a scene similar to the one she experienced three years earlier in France. In that film, a young actress is cornered by a big producer in a room with one crucial difference. In the movie I wrote, I ran away, said Argento. When she told Weinstein that the character was based on him he simply laughed, said Argento. It has been 20 years now since that encounter, and Argento still struggles, especially when she sees Weinstein. When I see him, it makes me feel little and stupid and weak, said Argento. After the rape, he won. In total, 13 women told The New Yorker that they were sexually harassed or assaulted by Weinstein and three said that they were raped. Shortly before the story was published, Weinstein asked Argento to meet with a private investigator and give testimony on his behalf. Myra Sorvino Sorvino and Uckett both say their careers took a nosedive when they dared to reject Weinstein. Sorvino said that Weinstein's attempts to engage with her began in 1995, when she was promoting her role in Woody Allen's Mighty Aphrodite, for which she would go on to win the Academy Award. He began to massage her shoulders while the two were alone in a hotel room at the Toronto Film Festival according to Sorvino, who said that he then tried to take things further but she was able to ward him off at the time. A few weeks later he managed to bypass her doorman and make it up to her apartment around midnight, at which point she told him her boyfriend was on the way after calling a male friend to rush over. Sorvino believed that this rejection of Weinstein ultimately hurt her career. There may have been other factors, but I definitely felt I start and that my rejection of Harvey had something to do with it, said the actress. Soon after the article was published, Sorvino tweeted, Very proud of my sisters in spirit who had the courage to break the silence. Very hard for me more so for others. We took our power back. She later added that her story pales in comparison to some of the others. One of those women was initially on the record detailing her experience until the last second. I'm so sorry, the legal angle is coming at me and I have no recourse, she said, having to suddenly remove all her claims and name from the piece. Rosanna Arkett Arkett says that her encounter with Weinstein happened in the early 90s when she had been sent to pick up a script from the producer at a restaurant in Beverly Hills. Soon after she arrived, she was asked to instead meet Weinstein in his hotel room. Once inside the room, Arkett said that Weinstein asked her for a massage and eventually pulled her hand towards his erect penis. I will never do that, Arkett said that she told Weinstein. Weinstein soon exacted his revenge she claims, saying, he made things very difficult for me for years. Arkett and Sorvino were arguably both at the heights of their career during the moments when these incidents occurred and their careers did noticeably go down with few roles in prestige pictures. Many of the actresses were connected within the industry but that did not seem to matter to Weinstein. Sorvino is the daughter of Goodfellas actor Paul Sorvino, Rosanna the sister of Patricia and David Arkett and Argento, the daughter of Suspiria director Dario Argento. Rosanna's Oscar-winning sister, who has been supportive of all the women who have come forward this fight, wrote about her sibling's bravery on Tuesday. I am very proud of my sister at Rocket and all the women and men and police who spoke up in this article, said Patricia Arkett. Rosanna Arkett is my oldest friend in this business. Ra, I am so so sorry. I know what your secret has cost you. I take full responsibility for not being the friend I should have been. I hope it's not too late. At Rocket, wrote Ellen Barkin. 
Nicole Kidman also weighed in on Tuesday, saying, As I've stated before publicly, I support and applaud all women and these women who speak out against any abuse and misuse of power be it domestic violence or sexual harassment in the workforce. We need to eradicate this behavior. And rounding out the new voices speaking out were Ben Affleck and Matt Damon, who denied that he had helped to kill a 2004 story that was set to reveal Weinstein's sexual harassment of women. If there was ever an event that I was at and Harvey was doing this kind of thing and I didn't see it, then I am so deeply sorry, because I would have stopped it, said Damon in an interview with Deadline. And I will peel my eyes back now, farther than I ever have, to look for this type of behavior. Amber Badalina The New Yorker article also contains new revelations about Amber Badalina, who accused Weinstein of groping her back in 2015 then watched as District Attorney Cyrus Vance elected not to press charges. The aspiring actress said Weinstein grabbed her breasts and put his hand up her skirt in a meeting in his office. She fled and reported the incident to the NIPTI. The next day she agreed to meet the executive again but this time was recording the exchange for officers. In the audio obtained by the New Yorker, Weinstein apologizes but then tries to coax her into his hotel room. Batilina says no multiple times before Weinstein finally gives up and they return downstairs. The most damning exchange is the one when Weinstein admits to groping the model. Oh, please, I'm sorry, just come on in. I'm used to that. Come on. Please, Weinstein can be heard saying on the tape. You're used to that? Responded Batilina. Yes. I won't do it again, said Harvey. The recording has now led many to call for the firing of Cyrus Vance, who just a few months after deciding to drop charges got a $10,000 check for his campaign from Weinstein's lawyer David Bowies. We had the evidence, said a police source. It's a case that made me angrier than I thought possible, and I have been on the force a long time. Manhattan Chief Assistant District Attorney Karen Friedman Agnifilo responded to the release of the audio in a statement on Tuesday. If we could have prosecuted Harvey Weinstein for the conduct that occurred in 2015, we would have. Mr. Weinstein's pattern of mistreating women, as recounted in recent reports, is disgraceful and shocks the conscience, said Friedman Agnifilo. While the recording is horrifying to listen to, what emerged from the audio was insufficient to prove a crime under New York law which requires prosecutors to establish criminal intent. She then added, subsequent investigative steps undertaken in order to establish intent were not successful. This, coupled with other proof issues, meant that there was no choice but to conclude the investigation without criminal charges. Emma de Cornese French actress Emma de Crony said that she met Weinstein in 2010, soon after he told her he had a script he was producing based on a book with a strong female character. Weinstein offered to show her the script and asked her up to his hotel room, where he began to take a shower. He then emerged, naked and with an erection, asking her to lay down with him on the bed and telling her that many had done so before. I was very petrified, said de Crony's. But I didn't want to show him that I was petrified, because I could feel that the more I was freaking out, the more he was excited. When she told him that she had to leave, Weinstein responded by telling the actress, We haven't done anything. It's like being in a Walt Disney movie. De Kooney said that she then gathered all her strength and turned around, telling Weinstein, I've always hated Walt Disney movies. A director at the studio she went to film at after the encounter confirmed that she was terrified and immediately shared details of her account, with Weinstein calling the women repeatedly to offer her expensive gifts. She also said that despite the statements of stars like Meryl Streep, there was no one in Hollywood who was unaware of Weinstein's behavior. I know that everybody, I mean everybody in Hollywood knows that it's happening, said her 
he's not even really hiding. I mean, the way he does it, so many people are involved and see what's happening. But everyone's too scared to say anything. Judith Goriki French star Judith Goriki said that she, like so many other women, was alone with Weinstein when he offered to give her a massage. She was at the Hotel de Cap, just like Argento, when Weinstein invited her to his room after breakfast. I was so naive and unprepared, said Goriki, who was 24 at the time. Soon after the massage began, Weinstein tried to rip off Goriki's sweater, she said, at which point she fled the room. The actress told her father and later phoned a Miramax executive, who told her not to complain and keep quiet about the incident. They put my face on the poster, said Goriki, whose breakout role in the film, Ridicule, was released around the same time. In the 20 years since the 1996 incident she has stayed on good terms with the executive, sending emails from time to time and keeping in touch because she felt it was necessary for her career. I tried to negotiate the situation over the years and negotiate with myself and pretend it kind of never happened, said Goriki. I wish I'd had someone to talk to, to say, how do you deal with this? Lucy Estola Lucy Evans, née Stola, was a college student preparing for her senior year at Middlebury in 2004 when she met Weinstein at Cipriani in New York City. She wanted to be an actress and gave the executive her phone number, eventually agreeing to come in and read for a female casting director at Weinstein's offices in Tribeca. When she arrived, however, she was taken to meet Weinstein in a room with empty takeout boxes and exercise equipment. The two spoke for a bit and then, according to Evans, Weinstein pulled out his penis and forced her to perform oral sex on him inside the office. I said, over and over, I don't want to do this, stop, don't, said Evans. I tried to get away, but maybe I didn't try hard enough. I didn't want to kick him or fight him. His size proved to be too much for Evans, however, who found herself completely helpless. I just sort of gave up. That's the most horrible part of it, and that's why he's been able to do this for so long to so many women. People give up, and then they feel like it's their fault, said Evans. Weinstein later acted as if nothing had happened, she said, and began calling her at night to meet said Evans, who turned down the executive. The repercussions from the incident last to this day, however, with Evans saying she still had nightmares. I had an eating problem for years. I was disgusted with myself. It's funny, all these unrelated things I did to hurt myself because of this one thing, said Evans. I ruined several really good relationships because of this. My schoolwork definitely suffered, and my roommates told me to go to a therapist because they thought I was going to kill myself. Another woman who claimed Weinstein raped her revealed that she feared going to the police and even stayed in contact with the man because of the power he wielded in the industry. I was in a vulnerable position and I needed my job, said the woman. It just increases the shame and the guilt. Emily Nestor The former assistant at the Weinstein Company was first revealed to be one of the movie mogul's victims last week in the New York Times initial expose. She was 25 back in 2014 when she was starting at the company and on the very first day Weinstein had her take his number and asked her to join him for a drink. She declined and asked if they could do an early morning coffee instead, expecting him to turn down the offer. Weinstein did not according to Nestor, who having been warned of his behavior dressed frumpy for their breakfast. The talk soon turned sexual however, despite the venue and time of day. He said, you know, we could have a lot of fun, said Nestor. I could put you in my London office and you could work there and you could be my girlfriend. When she declined her replied, oh, the girls always say no. You know, no, no. And then they have a beer or two and then they're throwing themselves at me. 
At that same breakfast, she also said that she watched him plant a negative item about an unnamed individual in relation to a story that was playing out at the time involving Amy Adams, who was starring in the Weinstein Company film, Big Eyes. That seems to be a reference to Adam's refusal to discuss the Sony hack at that time, which resulted in her being booted from an appearance on Today. I was very afraid of him, and I knew how well connected he was, and how if I pissed him off then I could never have a career in that industry, said Nesta. She ended up alerting human resources of her issues despite being a temporary employee at the company, having spent the entire morning also fighting off his unwanted sexual advances. It made me feel incredibly discouraged that this could be something that happens on a regular basis, said Nesta. I actually decided not to go into entertainment because of this incident. Jessica Bath after meeting Weinstein at a 2011 Golden Globes party, Jessica Bath was asked to come sit down with the movie man for a meeting at his hotel, The Peninsula. When she arrived he had ordered champagne and sushi so that the two could talk career stuff. What instead happened however was Weinstein requesting the bath give him a naked massage in bed while then bringing the conversation back to her career said the young woman. So, what would happen if, say, we're having some champagne and I take my clothes off and you give me a massage? Bath said Weinstein asked her. She informed him that would not happen and then prepared to make her exit, at which point Weinstein called her fat and said she needed to lose weight if she wanted to compete with Millikens. Bath drove home in tears, with multiple people saying they hears the same version of this story soon after, while a promised meeting with an executive at Weinstein's company ended up being nothing more than a formality. She would later star in the film, Ted and its sequel, and will next be seen in Tell Me Your Name. Bath tweeted on Tuesday, This is brutal. Thank you at Ron and Farrow and to every single woman having the courage to share their story and to those offering support. Luisa Gises In a press conference with her attorney Gloria Ray on Tuesday, Luisa Gises said that Weinstein invited her to his temporary office for a meeting during the 2008 Sundance Film Festival in Utah under the pretense of discussing her new movie. Geiser said that he insisted on listening to her pitch in his hot tub after emerging from the bathroom 30 minutes into the meeting, naked in an unfastened bathrobe. She claims that he asked her to watch him masturbate and that when she told him she was leaving, he grabbed her arm and pulled her into the bathroom. I kept talking as he got into the hot tub. When I finished my pitch, he asked me to watch him masturbate. I told him I was leaving. He quickly got out of the hot tub, said Geises. Weinstein then promised her career perks if he would stay and watch him pleasure himself in the tub, according to Geises. As I went to get my purse to leave, he grabbed my forearm and led me to his bathroom, pleading that I just watch him masturbate. My heart was racing and I was very scared, said Geises. I pulled my arm away finally and headed to the door. He started following me and telling me that he could introduce me to Bob Weinstein and that I could get a three-picture deal and that he would greenlight my script but I had to watch him masturbate. She then added, I was on the verge of tears but I pulled it together and quickly exited. Catherine Kendall Catherine Kendall was 23 when Weinstein incited her to a screening with him in 1993 at a theatre in Lincoln Centre, right near his Central Park apartment. The two stopped by the apartment soon after because Weinstein wanted to grab something and the Kendall came along after the two had enjoyed what she thought was a fruitful discussion about her career. No sooner had they arrived however than Weinstein appeared in his bathrobe and asked for a massage, according to the actress. He then left the room and returned naked, said Kendall. He literally chased me, said the actress, who would go on to star in Swingers. He wouldn't let me pass him to get to the door.
Weinstein then asked Kendall to show her breasts at the very least, which she declined to do before leaving, but the entire evening made her question her coeus of profession. Kendall said that as she left she thought, if this is what it takes, I can't do it. Tammy I. Roberts when she a 20-year-old waitress trying to break into the film industry, Tammy Ein Roberts got the chance to meet with Weinstein and audition for a film he was making at the time. She arrived to find Weinstein in a dub, at which point he encouraged her to take off her top since there would be a topless scene in the film, she claims. He then told her if she was not comfortable taking off her top then she would not be able to do it on camera according to Roberts. She left and to this day finds it hard to watch Weinstein's films. Dawn Dunning An aspiring actress, Dawn Dunning landed a screen test at Miramax in 2003 followed by dinner with Weinstein. She was told to meet him in his suite that night because his meetings were running late and found him with contracts for his three next films placed in front of him so said. Dunning claims she was then told she could sign on for a role in each if she would have three-way sex with Weinstein. She denied the request. You'll never make it in this business, she said Weinstein told her. This is how the business works. Dunning left the business and decided to start working as a costume designer. Ashley Judd Ashley Judd met Weinstein for a meeting in 1996 that took place in his room at the Peninsula. She said that she felt uncomfortable almost as soon as she arrived in Weinstein's room, revealing that she chose cereal from room service when it came time to order because it would arrive quicker than a hot meal. Judd said she was asked to give Weinstein a massage and then a shoulder rub, both of which she declined while trying to get herself out of the room. That is when he asked her to help him pick out his clothes for the day and then watch him shower. I said no a lot of ways, a lot of times, and he always came back at me with some new ask, said Judd. It was all this bargaining, this coercive bargaining. She eventually made her escape by joking that Weinstein would have to help her win an Oscar before she would be willing to touch him, stating that the prestige of working for his studio made it too difficult to forcefully shut down his harassment. There's a lot on the line, the cachet that came with Miramax, explained Judd. Rose McGowan the incident that occurred between the two in a hotel room at the 1997 Sundance Film Festival has never been revealed, but McGowan did receive a $100,000 settlement. For that she had to soak an ender and while she has stayed silent about the events she has been the most vocal about ending the cycle of abuse in Hollywood. On Tuesday, she called out Ben Affleck when he claimed to have no idea about the harassment while referring to McGowan as a spineless profiteer. Laura Madden It was also in 1991 when Weinstein sexually harassed one of his assistants, who was working overseas. Laura Madden said that she was asked by Weinstein to give him massages while he was staying at hotels in Dublin and London at that time. It was so manipulative, said Madden. You constantly question yourself, am I the one who is the problem? Any allegations of non-consensual sex are unequivocally denied by Mr. Weinstein. Mr. Weinstein has further confirmed that there were never any acts of retaliation against any women for refusing his advances, said a spokesperson for Weinstein. Mr. Weinstein obviously can't speak to anonymous allegations, but with respect to any women who have made allegations on the record, Mr. Weinstein believes that all of these relationships were consensual. Mr. Weinstein has begun counseling, has listened to the community and is pursuing a better path. Mr. Weinstein is hoping that if he makes enough progress, he will be given a second chance.